What I have here are world's first true lossless headphones with MFI certified. Q style NHB12 delivers studio quality, the highest resolution lossless, 192 kilohertz audio with zero distortion. It is a high resolution audio powerhouse, capable of handling audio files from 16 bit up to 24 bit. This means you can enjoy studio quality music on the go with an astonishing 6.5 times more information than standard CDs. As I was about to say... Moreover, it supports the Apple Lossless Audio Codec, the epitome of high-quality audio formats, thanks to its Apple MFI certification. Combined with an integrated DAC and current mode amplifier, NHB12 can provide unparalleled sound quality. Okay, I think we've got the gist. Betty is quoting from Q-Style's marketing literature, and I think you might thank me that it's a lot more concise than I would have been. Let's unbox. The first thing I get from the marketing materials is that clearly the Q-Style NHB12 earphones, earbuds or in-ear monitors, whatever you want to call them, are intended to be very high in quality. And to make sure we're all singing from the same hymn sheet, they are for listening to and enjoying audio from your phone. And you can use them professionally as in-ear monitors. And if I were the kind of person to do crazy TikTok covers, I'm sure I would use them for that. So as I said intended to be very high in quality. Compared to some products, the NHB12 is quite costly or reassuringly expensive if you prefer it that way. Today's price, as I find it online, is £284.20 GBP, reduced to £243.49. I'd have guessed that the dollar price might be numerically similar because that's often the way, but today I find £349 USD reduced to 299. Of course, prices may change, but that's what I see today. Now, the elephantine word in the room, lossless. These are apparently lossless earphones, in-ear monitors. That's the African elephant. And the Indian elephant is MFI. Which shall I look into first? <laughs> okay, the coin chooses MFI. I'm saying MFI because that's how I've heard people say it. I don't see why it shouldn't be like Hi-Fi or Wi-Fi, M-Fi. Rolls off the tongue, doesn't it? Maybe I'll say it that way in this video and see if it catches on. Anyway, UK viewers should note not to confuse it with MFI. 
which was a manufacturer of cheap furniture, particularly kitchen and bedroom furniture. And a Wikipedia factoid has it that at one point in time, 60% of British children were conceived in an MFI fitted bedroom. This, in my mind, is a good enough reason to call it MFI. MFI. But what is MFI? Well, it's Apple's certification for accessories made for iPod. Made for iPod. But now just MFI. Basically, a manufacturer signs up for this and then gets from Apple the technical specifications, access to the hardware components, certification tools, and badge artwork necessary for their products to connect and work properly with Apple products. And of course, they have to pay what some call the Apple tax to join. No surprise there. So this explains the M5 certification boasted by QStyle about their NHB12 earphones. I'm not going to investigate their claim that they're the world's first here. All that matters really is that they're working to Apple's standards. Apple knows best. Now, lossless. So simple, yet so complicated. What does lossless mean to audio professionals, audiophiles and hi-fi enthusiasts? It means that the bits, ones and zeros, that you receive are identical to those in the original digital master recording, approved by the artist, producer and label. You hear what is meant to be heard. The opposite to lossless is lossy. This is where the data is put through a mathematical sieve and only the bits that you can hear and appreciate get through. The rest that you cannot or can barely hear or appreciate are lost. The result is a data stream made up of fewer bits per second, more practical to transfer and store. So if you listen to MP3, AAC, YouTube, Spotify or anything lossy, you're not hearing the original audio. You're hearing a good, but not perfect, representation of it. To be fair, AAC, for instance, is very good at a high enough bitrate. Few people can tell the difference, and many of those who can don't mind. Now, <laughs> Bluetooth. This has long been a bone of contention for hi-fi enthusiasts. I think it's fair to say that Bluetooth was never intended for high-quality audio, but the quality has improved over the years. This will need a whole video to cover properly, but I can summarise here. As Bluetooth has improved, it has approached closer and closer to the holy grail of lossless. And now, in the present time, we have it. Yes, lossless Bluetooth audio. But, of course, there's a but. From what I research, and I can tell you it's complicated, lossless Bluetooth audio is possible, but only in a clean RF environment. RF, radio frequency. So if there's a lot of stuff going on, RF-wise, where you happen to be, the codec will adapt by reducing the bitrate, and we're back in lossy land. Sounds like a theme park. If you're a Bluetooth audio expert and can add to this, or point me in a useful direction to research for a future video, please let me and all of my viewers know in the comments. So, how can we achieve lossless audio in all environments, including those that are messy at radio frequencies? Friends, use a cable. <laughs> a cabled connection. Oh my gosh, this is at once so obvious and so old-fashioned. Audio cables were invented in the 1870s. Or the 1850s if you're French. Or the 1840s if you're Italian. Good old Wikipedia. And so, shock horror, the Q-style NHB12 uses a cable connection, and that's why it can be lossless. Now, several minutes into this video, I have disappointment for some. The connector is the old-style lightning connector. I don't think I'm disappointing Android users because I've mentioned Apple so much that surely they've dropped off by now. Perhaps to sleep from the tone of my voice. They shouldn't have because I have something for them. But iPhone 15 users, hey, you're up to date with technology. Congratulations. Your phone has a USB-C connector, not lightning as the NHB 12 requires. Don't worry, Apple will sell you an adapter for £29 GBP or whatever USD. You can look it up. It sounds a bit like another Apple tax, but this is where we are. I'm told that there will be a USB-C version of the Q-Style coming out soon. And depending on when you watch this video, it might be available for you now. Anyway, with my old-fashioned iPhone 11 Pro Max, which suits my needs very well, and I won't be upgrading until yet again remembering my iPhones 4, 5 and 6, 
the battery explodes in ultra slow motion. With my iPhone 11, I'm perfectly set up to test the Q-Style NHB 12. I'm not going to do this with a streaming service because A, Spotify doesn't yet have a lossless tier of service, and B, call me sneaky, but I'm not entirely convinced that lossless streaming is actually always 100% lossless. So I'll load up some files sourced from Wave Originals, I'm not going to be too fussy whether they're 16-bit or 24-bit, or even 32-bit at a sampling rate of 192 kilohertz, which the NHB 12 apparently can handle. I just want to know whether the NHB 12 works well in the real world. You know, where real people live real lives doing real everyday stuff. Oh, just for completeness, the NHB 12 supports the Apple lossless audio codec, which is, as you might guess, lossless. You can get the rest of the specs from the Q-Style website linked in the description. In between the lightning connector and the earphones is a DAC, a digital to analog converter. Audiophiles bicker endlessly about DACs, but here I'm just going to say, there's a DAC. Live with it. So you probably realise from the unboxing that these earphones, in-ear monitors, have the appearance of being very high quality, and that's always a good start. They look high quality and they feel high quality. Do they sound high quality? Well, we'll see shortly. QStyle specifically asked me to demonstrate how you should put on these earphones, so I imagine that's an issue they've had a little too often, and it would apply to any earphones of this type. So, first of all, identify left and right. If you've watched any of my earbud, earphone or in-ear monitor reviews, You'll know that usually I can't tell without putting on my reading glasses, which is a bore, and unnecessary because a large L and R, or colour coding, is all that's needed. On these, I can just about make it out. The L and R are large, but are the same chrome finish as the rest of the housing. It seems just a different texture. You could say that it's just my problem, but you too, my friend, will almost certainly need reading glasses when you get to my advanced age. So let's put them on, or in, if you prefer. This can be tricky. How easy they are to fit depends on how the shape of the earphone itself fits your ear. And of course we'll all be different in that. But also there's something about the stiffness of the cable where it curls around the ear. I found my Mackie MP240, which were my first in-ears. The cable is quite stiff where it curls over the ears. I found them easier to fit than the Simgot EM6L I tested recently, which are less stiff. The Q-Stars are less stiff again, more flexible if you prefer, and I do find them even easier to fit. There doesn't seem to be a correlation with stiffness, so I don't know. I'm just making my comment. Anyway, it gets easier with practice. As for comfort in the ear, I've said often enough I don't like sticking things in my ear, which is why open ear, over the ear, earbuds can be a useful thing to have, with some inevitable compromises due to physics. As I've found for anything in-ear, comfort definitely does depend on the ear tips, which need to be the right size for your ear canal. It isn't just the size, but size is the start. You'll find five pairs of ear tips of various sizes with the Q-Styles. The pair that were pre-fitted out of the box seem to me to be very comfortable, and I think this goes beyond the size and has something to do with the material. I'm sure at some point I'll make a video on ear tips, maybe audiophile ear tips, all I need is for a friendly manufacturer, distributor or retailer to send me some. That's a hint. Anyway, of all the things I've ever had stuck in my ears, the Q-Styles with the supplied ear tips are definitely the most comfortable. But to be clear, so much seems to be in the ear tips that if I swap them onto my other in-ear monitors or earbuds, I might find them comfortable too. If I'm banging on about comfort, it's because I consider comfort important. I find my headphones, normal headphones, extremely comfortable, so why wouldn't I just use them if earphones, earbuds or in-ear monitors are uncomfortable? But I'll be going out for my daily one-hour walk later with the Q-Styles and I'll see how things go, comfort-wise. Now, sound-wise, remembering that this is very subjective, I'm going to take a listen to the Simgut EM6L that I tested recently and I've been using currently in preference to my previous Mackies, though with the Mackie ear tips. I'll be using the SimGot with my phone and Apple DAC. There is a difference in sound. I'd be inclined to say that the Q-Styles are a little fuller and a little rounder. 
This is a frequency response thing, and I'd bet more about the fit in my ears than anything else. I'm certainly not hearing any roughness or distortion with either. And of course, noise, while not impossible, isn't likely to be an issue. I'm going to do a funny thing and swap one ear tip. What this will do is, if they're causing a difference in sound, I should hear an unbalanced sound between left and right. Oh yes, the sound is unbalanced. The fullness I've been talking about swings to the side with the Q-style ear tip. So this, again, tells me about the importance of ear tips. Of all the ear tips I have around me, the Mackie version has so far been the best and the most comfortable. But the Q-style is easier to fit, more comfortable, and sounds better. So there's a lot to this ear tip business. And fiddly as they are to fit, I'd like to investigate this further in a future video. So I'm not showing you this here, because honestly, it's so damn fiddly. But if I A-B test the SimGot and Q-Style using the Q-Style earbuds, well, it takes me so long to change over, I don't believe I can hear any substantive difference between the two. But the Q-Style cable is easier to handle, so there's a thing. For neither would I say that the sound is quite as full and powerful as my proper headphones, which when they came out in the 1990s were considered pretty high-end so I'd expect that. I just don't think that's possible with anything you stick in your ear, because it's so unlike real life, mostly. <laughs> oh, and when I say full and powerful, I don't mean loud. These earphones can go louder than I could possibly want without any sign of stress. It's only me that's stressed. Now, Android users, I've been making you wait. As I understand it, and I'm not going to bother to look it up because I know you know better than I do, I believe that Android phones still have the much-beloved mini jack socket. Well, at least some Android phones. None, as far as I know, has a lightning port. So you're locked out. No. The Q-Style NHB12 comes with an accessory cable with a mini jack at one end and two tiny two-pronged connectors at the other. So yes, you can ditch the DAC and use this, if you have a mini jack socket. And of course, this makes the Q-Style usable professionally as an in-ear monitor, because you can plug it into your audio interface or whatever's useful. You'll probably need a quarter-inch adapter, but everyone has a few of those lying around. OK, if that hasn't covered everything, it's covered pretty much all I have to say. I'm very pleased with the sound quality, and I'm very pleased with the comfort. I did take a break and go for the one-hour walk I mentioned earlier, and the comfort is good. Not as comfortable as over-the-ear earbuds, which I can forget I'm wearing, but the sound quality, because of the in-ear design, is better. If you're curious, the monks. <laughs> On Spotify, so not lossless, but I'll swear I could hear every string of that six-string banjo. I'm not going to sign and seal this right now, but I suspect that for pleasure listening, I could possibly turn to the Q-Style occasionally rather than my headphones, particularly if I'm off my travels and I don't want to take anything bulky. It's going to be up to you to calculate the price versus value proposition. Remember, these are not cheap, but I have no quibble about the performance. Q-Style sent me these, by the way, but otherwise there's no other payment from them, so I can say what I like, and I've said it. See you soon.